okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'll just like to welcome you all this evening to the town council meeting. We've got quite a lot to get through this evening. Uh, I don't think it'll quite be as speedy as it was in uh, our previous meeting, but nevertheless, we'll get through it all. I'm sure by the time by the time we finish. Um, so I've got a presentation here this evening. Um, there's no announcements by me at all. I don't know if anybody's got anything they want. Okay. Um, moving on to the second point, presentations. We've got Kim Waller, I believe, is it lead project manager. Just like to welcome you this evening. I presume you're going to give us a presentation. Yes, that's correct. Is, are we moving straight on to that item now, or are you coming back to us shortly? Yeah, you move. You uh, start whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, Thank you very much for inviting us this evening. Um, as mentioned, my name's Kim Waller. I'm lead project manager with Denbyshire Council in the corporate programme office. But since earlier this year, I've been um, providing some programme management support to the Cluid South Leveling Up Fund programme of activities in, in Denbyshire. Um, and we wanted to come and, and talk to you to, to share some information and make sure that you were aware of the projects that have funding through the programme and how the teams will engage with you and work with you. Um, if I can just introduce my colleagues, we've come in force this evening, I hope that's okay. So um, Dave Shiel, you possibly already are familiar with or, or at least uh, some of your members will have met David I'm sure before. Um, he's a an AOMB area manager um, and is, is very much part of, of um, the work around the sort of countryside services projects um, in the area. So David's also one of the project managers on the three of the four projects that we have happening in the area. So David's very kindly come along today to share a bit more information with you. Um, Kirsty Newell is a project officer working with me on the programme. Um, so we do uh, all the sort of dry stuff around the framework of funding and some reporting and, and such like and nagging and, and things like that. Um, and then we have Natalie Anderson, um, who's just joined uh, the team recently to work with David on the Countryside Services project. Um, she's only very recently started, so she asked if she could come along and observe, um, but, but we perhaps best not ask her any questions just yet um, while she finds her feet. So, so that's that's us. Um, we do have some slides to share if you've all got access. Will you be able to see them? If you do share through Teams, yes. Yeah, so if uh, Kirsty's going to be the hostess here t this evening, um, so hopefully this will work. I have had some technical issues um, in terms of my, my broadband. If you have trouble hearing me, can you please let me know and I'll turn off my camera. OK, so um, so the levelling up fund fluid south, um, if you can move on to the next slide, Kirsty, please. Um, just in terms of what we thought um, our aims were for this evening, so just to give you a bit of background to the levelling up fund round one. So that was the first round um, and the Cluid South application. And that may be introducing you to things that you're all already familiar with. Um, I'm not sure whether there's been any changes on the town council, so I thought it was probably best just to give you a quick recap um, to, to set the scene, if you like. And as part of that, to share the overall na narrative of the approved application so that you can see the sort of context within the funding that we're delivering. And then to introduce you to the projects in your area and give you a bit more information on, on those, which is probably of more interest to you, I would think. OK, Kirsty. So in terms of, uh, of background, um, you may be aware, I don't know, as I say, um, apologies if I am going over old grounds. Uh, but just to recap, there was a very, very short window springtime last year um, where the UK government opened up a new funding programme called Leveling Up um, and invited applications. Um, they were looking for established capital projects with 
what they termed a coherent na narrative. So there was a very limited amount of time to be able to pull projects forward to go into this funding um, opportunity. Um, and the cr criteria was focused around heritage economy or transport projects. There was engagement with local members and the MP was, was very much involved in trying to pull something together um, very quickly. And the, the projects and the narrative, if you like, are centred on the 11 mile corridor for the World Heritage Site. And then with Corwin as a gateway to, the, to that World Heritage Site. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that in, in, a, in a moment. Kirsty? Okay, so, so the application um, is for the Cluid South constituency and as such that also goes into Wrexham. Uh, so Wrexham um, were uh, agreed to be the applicants and the lead authority. Um, and the Canal and River Trust are also a key partner. A lot of the projects uh, focus on the waterways as well. So also important um, that they were, were a part of that, that um, uh, approach. Um, there was an announcement in October um, that Cluid South had been successful. So that was really positive. Um, total of just over 15 million pounds was secured for the whole application of which 4.2 million pounds was secured for projects in Denbyshire so that that's for projects in Clangochlan and for Corwin um, and um, that they are for very specific things so it's not available as an open funding um, approach now and we'll we'll go on to the projects shortly it took though around about six months for UK government to issue the formal agreement um, so that's taken a bit of time and I think working with UK government is something quite new to us as an authority. Um, obviously lots of, of experience of working with Welsh government but UK government is, is a slightly different beast um, and so understanding their requirements and all the paperwork and such like that, that they need has, has been a, a sort of part of, of the, the learning process that we're going through with this as well. OK, um, Kirsty. So in terms of, of the narrative, I won't I'm conscious of your time. So the the bid focuses on the world's heritage site at its core, particularly the, the aqueducts and improvements around the Trevon Basin area for visitors. And then the, the story continued around project two, which is improvements within the 11 mile world heritage site. And that's the project which brings us money uh, for your project activities in Clangochlan and Clantasilio. Um, and then the third project was around this improved gateway into that World Heritage Sites area. So the focus and some of the communication that is as we, we push things out will probably make reference to this, but it's also important that we link in with the World Heritage Site Management Group and the ANOB um, uh, Management Group as well. Well, in terms of of delivering um, uh, the, the the projects. Okay, Kirsty. So in terms of Denbyshire, um, so as mentioned, project one is around the World Heritage Sites and the the Trevor Master Pla um, Basin area. So that's being delivered by Wrexham and the Canal River Trust. So we have no involvement in in project one. A um, little bit deceptive as well, because there's actually 18 project activities, I think, across the whole application. But UK government split it as project one, project two, project three. Um, so in Denbyshire, we set up project teams to work on each of, of the projects. Um, and each project has a project manager. So as, as mentioned, uh, the three countryside services in Clangochla, um, and Clancilio, uh, David is your project manager or the project manager and um, uh, Sean Lloyd Price and Kimberly Mason are pro the joint project managers on the fourth project. Um, so we have clear resourcing there in terms of how we're, we're trying to work. The UK government are closely monitoring our financial and delivery plans um, and once we got that formal approval uh, we got the resources in place to work on the projects and all the projects have reviewed what we did in March last year has increased 
um, beyond recognition and also there were delays in that, that formal agreement so what can be done within the time frame we need to be able to deliver these projects by March 2024 that is the UK government requirement so time scales are a major challenge and we are going to, to need to, to press forward with these projects um, with when we haven't got a great deal of room for for major delays so that is something that's a challenge we need to manage um, and also it's important to manage the community's expectations and I think perhaps the town council can can support us with this as well in in terms of um, capital projects particularly can take some time to see visually ground um, because there are a number of, of processes that need to be gone through in order to be able to start that delivery so procurement planning permissions and other permissions and so on I'm sure you'll you'll be familiar um, with the types of things that we need to do around public funding um, so that's something we're conscious of um, and the other thing that that we're aware of across projects is um, that the the, the the interest that there is in the area um, from visitors, um, the need to, to manage our work, taking that into account as well. Okay, Kirsty. So in terms of project two, so that they're the projects in Clangochlin and Clantasilio, that just shows the breakdown of the funding that was approved by UK governments. So I'm not going to go into that in detail. We'll move on to the projects themselves. So there are four projects that we're focused on in the area. Now, apologies because um, the project managers for the four great highways weren't available. For, for the meeting today. However, they will be linking in with you in December or early January to talk in more detail around designs for this project. And I think that there will have been some emails directed to the town council to seek information and guidance and such like um, already. So those project managers will be and have been, I believe, and will be connecting with yourselves on the detail of the project. The visual on this is a little bit difficult to see as well, so I don't I don't know whether Kirsty can get into um, at all on this. Um, if you squint, you might be able to see it, but we'll uh, try our best here. So the four great highways project uh, um, is is the project with the biggest budget. Um, it's emanated from work that the Clangochlan 2020 group um, started of focusing on the four great highways that are the railway, the canal, the river and the road. Um, so the areas that this project is particularly focusing on um, are around accessibility, information and interpretation. So starting on the left hand side, um, part of the, the project is looking at the accessibility up to the wharf. Uh, I think you'll 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 obviously be familiar with with um, the, the geography. Um, steps one direction, slope the other. Um, quite difficult in terms of accessibility if you have mobility issues and so on. So they're trying to look at design solutions to improve that, that can be delivered in that quite small and difficult space. So that's one area. Accessibility <laughs> also into Lower D Mill Park. Because again, the corner there into Lower D Mill Park is stepped. Um, it's only accessible if you have limited mobility from the car park at the other end. So the project wants to try and change that accessible. Um, looking at um, the public realm along the Lower D Mill Park area. Um, looking at improvements to the access out of the river by river users because at the moment it's quite difficult to move from the landing point to the car park um, and that can provide challenges as well to the different users of that area. Um, looking, exploring the concept of a public viewing area in the park as well to try and encourage people to move off the bridge and go and look at the bridge from a different location rather than standing static um, and, and blocking the, the paving. Um, also I think identified from that original concept design was that the wharf and the railway are not necessarily all that easy for people to, to 
very clear in there um, people were missing those those activity those attractions so looking at, at how that could be approved improved um, and interpretation because I think from that original concept um, was celebrating the heritage of the town um, and and wanted to explore how that heritage could be communicated better um, in some of these these areas so that they're the key focal points of that project um, there are some outputs that we need to deliver for UK government as well um, and in terms of progress um, the project's commissioned a design team now with some heritage and urban specialists as well to help with the interpretation. Um, they've done some initial feasibility work around ecology surveys because obviously, as, as you know, um, really important, particularly along the river um, to understand uh, what lives there and what we need to, to be mindful of in, in terms of any, any development. Um, there's been uh, an initial tree survey done as well to understand uh, the, the layout and, and um, feasibility of, of, of the trees in the area. Um, so the design team now, the next stage is to start to to take these concepts and, and come up with some more uh, detailed designs. So that is where the, the team will be coming back to you as the town council, um, December, maybe January, with some ideas to seek your input into how this project then evolves. Um, so that's that's a very speedy introduction to the Four Great Highways project, um, what it's looking at, where it's come from originally, and um, what the next steps are. I don't know if you want to pause there and ask any questions or whether we should do the other three projects and then open up for discussion. Yeah, we're happy to move on to the next next projects. Yeah. OK, and I do apologise. I'm going quite quickly, but I know that you've you know, you've got a lot on your your agenda. So uh, so I'm going to hand over to David now. So I'm sure you've had enough of listening to me and David's going to introduce you to the next the other three projects for the area. Uh, OK, thanks, Kim. Um, uh, so we're sort of um, sitting on three of the um, projects, uh, as Kim said. The first one uh, that it looks like we're going to talk about is um, our plans at Plas Newydd. Um, so um, the main uh, sort of um, aspiration for Plas Newydd is to, is to make a link to the Weaver's Cottage. I don't know, I'm sure you're sort of aware that um, between the community garden and you know the main grounds of Plasnewydd, <clears throat> there is the old weaver's cottage, which is kind of boarded up at the moment and um, uh, sort of mothballed. Um, you know, we're obviously keen in the future to to look at doing something with that building. It's beyond the scope of the Leveling Up program, um, but um, the sort of the the and the, the initial challenge is it's just really, really difficult to get to. Um, so it's really difficult even to sort of you know develop too many plans for it. So um, we're hoping that the levelling up fund that we have for Plas now with will help us to, to um, develop a pedestrian access to the Weaver's Cottage. And for those of you who know the site will know that it's uh, that's quite challenging in itself. It's very steep bank uh, down to um, the river and uh, from the you know from the area where the bowling green is at Plas Newydd. So um, we have commissioned um, a topographical survey to look at you know in detail the lie of the land um, and we're in the process of um, developing some detailed plans um, for what that uh, pedestrian access would look like. Um, it's uh, something that uh, we'll need to um, work with CADU on because, as you probably know, the grounds at Plas Newydd are Grade 2 listed. Um, so we'll need to sort of uh, bring CADU along with us um, and uh, as those plans are developed. Um, the other um, aspect of the work at Plas that we're keen to develop is to um, improve access to the Dell itself. So um, there are a number of ways down into the Dell. Um, and we've improved access to a, a couple of them through the RPHS landscape project. Um, but the access uh, down sort of uh, sort of down 
between the lions, you know, and the, the, the main path from the orchard at uh, Plasno by the water tower is the entrance way that we want to improve through the levelling up programme. So that will mean, um, again, if you're familiar with the site, there's a bit of a rusty old handrail that was that sort of goes down that that path that was probably put in in the 70s at some point. Um, so we want to replace all of that um, with something that's bespoke, um, handmade and sort of reflects the historic um, uh, aspects of the ground. So we've commissioned um, an artist and blacksmith to sort of come up with, um, you know, a, a, a design for a, a rather nice handrail that will uh, guide people down into the dell. And as part of that, um, we'll widen the path as well so that it becomes a little bit more friendly for people um, who are less mobile. And within the, that scheme as well, we um, we plan to put in um, a viewing area just at the top. So for those people who don't want to go down into the dell, you know, they'll still be able to see um, and enjoy, you know, some of the um, uh, the, the wildlife um, of that area. So um, that's a sort of fairly straightforward aspect of the project. Um, the, the more challenging bit of it is going to be to develop this path down to the Weaver's Cottage. Um, so um, when we have more detailed designs, perhaps we can, you know, come and share those with you um, at a later date. OK, uh, moving on to um, Wemfrood, the other project that we have um, is, again, I'm sure you're all familiar with the work that's been um, taking place at Wemfrood um, Nature Reserve. Um, that was opened a year or so ago as a, a reserve um, with the car park um, just uh, you know, up, up the, the, the Wrexham Road a little bit. Um, initially, it was it was sort of just a a circular path um, on, uh, around the old tip site. Um, the first thing that the nature, the um, leveling up program did was to to establish the link between that site and the health centre. So it was a, a very early, very quick achievement within leveling up. When, because we were already developing that site um, on the back of our heritage lottery program, um, we were able to sort of um, keep going and, and um, make some fairly quick progress um, when the levelling up programme was um, approved. So the new link from the health centre up to Wemfrood um, is part of um, the work that we um, initially carried out through levelling up. And I think that's proved to be really popular. Um, it's made a big difference for people walking from town or cycling from town um, up to Wemfrood. The next thing that we hope to do, <clears throat> which will be much more challenging, I think, is to make the link from Wenfrood Nature Reserve up onto the canal towpath. So at the top end of the site, um, uh, it sort of the, the land drops down into the woods um, and then there's a quite a steep bank again, um, which uh, which takes you up onto the canal. So um, it was always our intention when we started the right from the, you know, initially starting the work at Wemfrood when we put the car park in that we would make that link to the canal. So the leveling up program has made it possible for us to sort of investigate that and start the initial works to do it. Um, very challenging, very steep bank. Um, we've commissioned, um, we've had to do sort of um, top again, topographical surveys. Um, we've done some geophysical sort of um, surveys as well um, to sort of um, test the stability of the ground. Um, we've carried out ecological surveys and tree surveys to see what the implications would be for, for doing the scale of those works in that area. Um, and we're, we're sort of developing a plan um, that will um, create um, a, a fairly accessible path from Wemfrood up onto the canal. Um, it's when I say the canal, I mean the World Heritage Site. Um, so that's another constraint that we have. We're talking about doing sort of fairly major piece of work um, connecting to the World Heritage Site. So again, we've been talking to CADU about that and we will need to apply for scheduled monument consent um, to um, to develop this programme. So again, it's um, there's quite a lot of hurdles to, to sort of jump over and constraints to sort of um, tackle um but we're working through them one at a time and and i think that we're getting closer to being able to achieve that um that link up onto the canal which i think will make wemfrood you know even more accessible you'll be able to walk up from the health center you know and back along the canal and make some nice little circuit and also um the, one of the original ideas of developing wemfrood was to sort of try and take some of the pressure off other areas of the world heritage site horseshoe falls for example or um, you know, other uh, Trevor Basin or other areas, it becomes a gateway onto the World Heritage Site. And we're already seeing that Wemfrood is being used as a, uh, a place to park and go walking in the Dee Valley. So it's you know, hopefully, you know, taking a little bit of pressure off, off uh, Slangoslin as well. 
So getting that link onto the towpath, I think, will be you know a big um, uh, game changer in terms of the way Wenfrood what Wenfrood offers. Um, the other thing that we hope to achieve at Wenfrood um, is to um, develop some additional cycle routes. So there's this scope within the site to um, create some additional little loops for uh, cycling, uh, family cycling particularly. And we've already seen, I think, Wenfrood, even though Flangoflin, you know, nestles in sort of spectacular landscape and countryside, you know, actually not much of the countryside around Flangoflin is accessible if you're less mobile or if you've got young children. So we've seen, you know, a lot of people using Wenfrood um, in that sense, you know, with young children or less mobile. So um, creating some family friendly cycling um, or some some additional family cycle friend, uh, friendly cycling as part of the, the programme is also something that we will be doing um, before the uh, as part of the programme. What we'd like to do, though, is to, to see how much, you know, when, once we've tackled the big issue of getting up onto the, the canal towpath, that will determine you know, how much of the rest of it we can achieve. And then the other final thing for Wenfrood is um, we've got some plans for the um, compound, the old compound where the skips used to be. Um, it's still functioning as a sort of a bit of a depot. Street scene use it, we use it, um, and it's got real potential to be developed as a community hub, I think, for um, some of our Nature for Health volunteers, um, sort of uh, other volunteers in the town to come out and use Wenfrood as a community space for um, you know volunteering and traditional skills and, and things like that. So we want to make the compound area a little bit less uh, um, sort of uh, utility. It's a, it's a bit um, grim at the moment with its razor wire and its grey security fencing. We'd like to make it a little bit more friendly in terms of um, you know, the way we hope the site will be used. OK, I see we've moved on to Horseshoe Falls as well already, so excuse, apologies for the time. Um, at the Horseshoe Falls, um, we have uh, a number of things we want to try and achieve. Um, obviously, we've seen um, Horseshoe Falls uh, get um, significantly busier over the last few years, um, so um, it's struggling to cope with you know the high numbers of visitors that are going there. Um, a key key aspect of that would be um, the toilet block um, needs uh, an upgrade, and particularly the um, the foul drainage facilities, the septic tank. Um, uh, so not very exciting, but very very essential um, that we we do some work to upgrade the the way that toilet block functions. So we're just we're investigating the best options for that at the moment in terms of you know the most environmental uh, options. Um, and we are also looking to um, address some of the severe erosion problems. You can see from that picture there that, you know, um, around the river bank, um, there's um, an increasing amount of erosion that we're concerned about. So we're looking at options for addressing that. Um, and finally, at Horseshoe Falls, um, a few years ago, um, an access point into the river was put in off the canal um, for um, kayaks and canoes. Um, there's some additional work that needs doing to that to make it sort of more fit for purpose. Um, so we're working with the Canal and River Trust um, to, uh, to do some additional work to that access point that will make it um, more fit for purpose. So again, that's limited with um, the river is a special area of conservation and the canal is a World Heritage Site. So we're talking to both CADU and Natural Resources Wales about the various consents that will be needed to achieve that. So a lot of work still to do, but those are the, the key points that we hope to achieve before the end of the programme. Sorry if that took too long to that... explain that. <laughs> I think that that brings us to the end of of the slides. So uh, apologies if if that was um, a little bit too much information, but we probably felt it was it was a good opportunity with our first introduction of the program just to to cover the background where you know where we've got to and, and where we're going now really, which is the most important bit next. Um, so do you have questions? If we can just try and condense the questions. As small as we can. Um, obviously, we've got a time crunch on as well, um, as we've got to finish the meeting by eight o'clock. Um, so, if we've, if we've got lots of questions, um, we might be better forward than by email. Um, we have got a couple of minutes if somebody's got a direct question that could maybe be answered straight away. I have a question. <laughs> yeah, when does um, this money became available originally? Uh, the level of funds. Uh, who actually decided initially uh, 
projects where this money should be perhaps usable. I'm just curious about that. Can I ask you to repeat the question? I couldn't hear it very clearly. Sorry. Yeah, when this um, level of fund money became available in history, um, who actually conceived the ideas of what the money should be spent on? OK, um, thank you It's all, it's all like if the ideas have been created and then publicly being told that this is what we're having. Um, there was, a, a, as I sort of mentioned at the beginning, there was a very, very short window open of opportunity and, and many local authorities didn't apply for funding in the first round. Um, I think Wrexham were keen to, to put forward an application and were keen for Denbyshire to be a part of that process. I wasn't working on it at the time. So the information I'm going to give you now is, is second hand. But as I understand it, there was um, contact made with the elected members at the time and with the MP and with um, sort of key, key stakeholders in the area who maybe had projects that were basically ready to go um, because there, there really was six, eight weeks to be able to compile the information that needed to go into the application. So it wasn't an ideal process, um, I, I would suggest, because ideally you'd want more time. Um, but but that was the, the process that was followed at the time. And I think the MP was very um, instrumental in terms of trying to pull forward um, projects uh, to, to be included. Um, but as I say, very strict criteria, very short time frame, um, and the, the work was done with, with uh, the MPs elected members and where there was projects that were known to be ready to go, um, they, they were considered as to how they would fit into that overall narrative to try in and put forward a successful application. Could I just ask who the MP was, please? Yes, it's, it's Simon Baines. Okay. Do we have any further questions? Just a very quick one. Do you have a contact point? Because I've got loads of things that I want to raise, but if you could give us a contact point for these projects, then perhaps we could communicate with you outside of the meeting. Yes, if it, I mean, if you wanted to send a list of questions to me in the first instance, and then I can I can um, liaise with the the relevant teams. But yeah, um, we can I'd be, certainly. I'd be make happy sure. to. I'd be happy to um, you know um, liaise directly with anybody who wants to either come and visit Wenfrood or any of the sites. You know, um, you know, we'd be happy to do that. Um, so happy for you to contact me if with any, not just now, but at any point, you know, if you've got any questions about the project work that we're, we're, we're working on. Okay, thank you. I think that brings the presentation to an end. Thank you all very much for your time and coming forward and offering the presentation. It's much appreciated. Thank you very much for having us this evening. And as I say, please do send through your questions because I think um, communicating and working together. Oh, I have a question for you. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, the, the four great highways team, the project managers, always seem to issue me with a task to do. And today's task was to ask you whether you have a place plan for Clangochlan because they were they were given some information that suggested that you did. Is that is that something that you have? Uh, yes, we've got a, a community. It's called um, Clary Lovett and Often People's okay. Plan. Uh, I'll forward it on to you. So uh, fantastic, because they'd like to have sight of that to make sure that, that anything that's being developed is sympathetic yeah. to, to your, um, you know, your plans. Fantastic. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> and thank you very much. Thank you. The next uh, point three statements from the public. Okay. Um, we'll move on to statement four. Um, the council councillors. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
First couple are, are local to the town. Um, I don't know whether I've told you before, but East Street Car Park is scheduled to be um, resurfaced as part of the forward work programme. And I requested that some changes needed to be made in order to facilitate cycle racks. Um, and I had a meeting there with Tom Johnson. Um, there appears to be some drainage issues on that car park, which have been there for some time on the right hand side as you go in. Um, so, that I've, uh, so they need to be addressed. So there might be a lot more work that needs to be done. Um, as we know that there was another incident with the bollards at the end of the bridge. Uh, I mean, I was on leave at the time, but I believe one ended up halfway up Hill Street. Um, it's now in the depot in Rithin and probably will not be returning to Llangollen, that particular one. Uh, there are, um, there was a meeting some months ago uh, between um, with Councillor Keddie and myself and um, Mike Jones uh, and Councillor Barry Mellon because uh, there needs to be some tweaking with the scheme. Um, we're still going through that process at the moment. Um, so nothing concrete has been decided, uh, but um, but there will uh, changes need to be made. Um, <clears throat> the street sign in Market Street car park, I don't know if any of you are aware of it, has been bent, but the poles are bent and have been for quite some time. Um, I bet that's, uh, that's actually going to be removed completely now and not be being replaced. I presume they might put the signage somewhere else, but they haven't actually stated where. Um, with regards to the County Council, it's all about the budget, which we're waiting for on the 17th of November. Um, there are going to be, uh, I think the Welsh Government will then um, announce their budget on the 13th of December. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a difficult time. Uh, and. Uh, there are going to have to be some challenging and difficult decisions that are having to be made. Um, we ha it hasn't been decided what because we are waiting to see what what's stated in the budget. But I'm just forewarning you that it's going to be it's going to be very difficult in the next few years. And that's pretty much about it at the moment. I've been on leave for till the two and a half weeks, so I'm just kind of still catching up with things but you know if you've got any questions please feel free to ask anything i've got one oh <laughs> well they're not going to replace a sign at east street replace the one that was damaged at the bottom of the bridge street it was ripped off wasn't it it was smashed there, yeah they? Well, they have replaced the top of it haven't they i think it's just a it bit skew up again it, it, it? It, no it was the round one at the top of the that's all right okay the one at the bottom was the one that got knocked all right and then it was ripped off yeah. And I found out they're always stuck up against the wall, some photographs. And then uh, and it disappeared. The sign's not legal. Oh, I'll make a note to that. The I two, the, two uh, the top here, the access only bit. And the restrictions are going to work together. Yeah. We don't know how that was originally knocked off, do we? I presume it might have been with the it was hit. exploding bay. It, it was hit by, uh, the consensus of opinion was it was hit by a delivery van, right? Trying to squeeze into the load bay because it was a, a nearly parked car there, and it happened again when it was ripped off. Right. Okay. Oh, uh, there's which brings me to there's one other issue I think at the moment. Um, insofar as the fire alarm apparently went off, um, in the uh, building in the car park that's used by the traffic wardens and uh, street scene and what have you. Um, and I think that the door had to be um, broken into in order to find out whether there was an actual fire or not. There wasn't. But uh, so now that's screwed together. So we've got no parking enforcement in that at the moment. That's the new mm -hmm. thing I'm addressing. Can I quickly ask, do we know, has any data come back of um, the traffic monitoring on Brook Street going up towards the school. I've had a local person contact me in regards to the signage mm -hmm. at the bottom of the hill because actually you've got essentially um, it's a 20 mile hour zone, but the 20 mile an hour signs are very high. So actually where you're turning off the A5 to go up Brook Street to a, towards school, 
20 mile an hour signs are kind of out of eye line and they've got, you know, one of the hand-drawn children's images lower down like he drives slowly. He was contacted me um, asking whether that could be even just reversed. So you've got that 20 lower, so it's more evident that you're entering a 20 mile an hour zone. And then I saw over the last few weeks there'd been, um, you know, where they put double traffic monitoring lines across the road to register. I just wondered if there'd been any update on that, really, so I can go back to... No, we haven't received an update. Um, it was only yeah, literally can... the last couple of weeks, so I, I expected it would take a bit of time. Yeah, but I yeah. think it is quite essential, given, you know, the dark nights and the children up and down the hill and people not adhering, essentially, to that 20 mile an hour um, okay. speed zone there. Mm. Um, the local person also suggested whether it would be appropriate to have some 20 mile an hour um, paint Re on the actual marked. road mark because as you're approaching that hill then that would be much more eye sight than, than that um, sign which is probably too high. Mm. Okay. I can enlighten you on two things there. Yeah, I've had, I've had that too. One, the, uh, when we got the silence on the road. There's uh, legal parameters you've got to be within anyway. Yeah. But you probably find that's not even legal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is the count on the traffic. We've had several of them done in Shear Street. Oh, have you as well? And it takes about a month for the when they take them up. Ah. It takes about a month to collect the data. Okay. And they ask for it and give it a print out. I've got several of them. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we get every car that does and have to last between the two. Okay. Just going to move forward if that's possible because we've got an awful lot to get through. Yes. Um, have you got anything? No, that's, that, I, I, I'm consciously aware people have got to get through, but that, 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 that's pretty much what we did. Thank you very much. Right. Um, have we got any apologies this evening? Uh, We've got any declarations of trust and then the item declaration of interest. Um, no, nothing. Okay. Um, the minutes. Um, I do believe we had uh, some issues with some previous minutes, did we? Yeah, there was concern that uh, Jackson Kelly declared because he didn't actually declare an interest. He mentioned he'd have to name in a, um, a comment on the planning application, which isn't quite the same thing. I mean, that, but as a county councillor, that's something he would be doing. So uh, that they that didn't need to be included. Although Councillor Fair, uh, Fair was was a present, and that's been included. So okay. with that minor change, we can approve both sets of minutes. Yeah, are we happy to sign with that? Yeah. Just a very quick question on those minutes. Can we see um, the response that went back on the Future Generations Act on our behalf and to membership on the corporate plan? Can yeah, you do yeah, those? Yeah. That'd be great. Um, Thanks. Future Generations you found in Barnsworth. And the share, it went in. It was on their corporate plan. Yeah. It went into our outbox, so it didn't get there. But they have commented that they've taken note of them. That's when you've got Oh, that. great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, financial reports. Um, yeah, we can switch it through uh, financial payments. Are we done the October minutes? Yeah, both have been done. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, authorised payments are presented. If you want to see them, I've got the version here. As there's nobody outside, I'm going to share. Yeah. Apologies, there's a zero on the single scene of that. It's going to this. It's, um, just the emergency glazing, we had um, somebody throw a, something at the window for the offices. Fortunately, it's laminated, well, fortunately it's laminated so they didn't break in. But the unfortunate bit, there were bits of glass throughout the whole of the office. Kept on cutting themselves, it's nice on the, on the 
wouldn't believe how far sharks are glass right across the roof. Uh, so we had to come and have that done, and it had it was like a, 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 a full's eye on one, and it had cracked the one above. So we had to get very direct windows out. So that's that's what the emergency glazing is. Uh, electricity and gas are quite promising at the moment. Durham College, as you see last winter, displays that's that's um, <coughs> for planting for the winter. We don't have the time baskets. It's just all the uh, the ground level uh, there. And, uh, probably coming. Unfortunately, one didn't go off. It's not so many bottles, uh, but that, 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 that's it in essence. So, is that emergency glazing we can something that can be reclaimed on the insurance or is it that's excess? Yeah, so yeah. it's also two hundred and fifty excess. So <laughs> they're just a, they're just a deal. Then, in fact, so we're quite happy. Okay, I just have a quick question on a diet last year. Is that the poppy challenge? Is that this in the through the flowers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just to cut out another ball, but does anyone complain about it? It's not my fault. Oh, that's the other thing. The other thing is one of the fires are very full. It's bad. Yeah. It's, um, it was just something that's like an animal that appears to me. Someone in the school was like some sort of like, um, I don't know, up for conscious Taipei's or something. Said so they were very surprised that when, of course, it was such a loud bang and some of the soldiers thought they might have had PTSD. Mm. It was, <laughs> I mean, it's got an influence to that. It was the British Legion that that's yeah. yeah, I just, I just, it was probably, if anyone was offended, it was probably someone being offended on someone else's behalf. Yeah. Well, it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're happy with that, we'll yeah. be closer to that. Yeah. yeah. Is on, to see. And, uh, so I have a few problem, technical problems myself here today. <coughs> the software to work on. So, I financial statements, look at this. Think of it as just a plus. It's a plus. Again, uh, we're not doing too bad against profile. Um, however, <coughs> some of the larger payments are yet to go through in terms of asset management. Um, we also got some more work to do on the chain bridge by the end of last year. So, uh, as you see in a later report on the budget, I don't think there'll be much left in terms of uh, understanding this year. If it is, it'll be very small amounts. Civic events, events to the Christmas festival will make a bit of a say in there. I mean, it's exceptionally good, I would say. The record, Sunbell Breath, uh, Rentals, Carrot Management, but it's a bit of a complete economic mm -hmm. challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. only cost us for 600 pounds. Uh, uh, Councillor Sherman, I uh, was organising the country for the yeah. Christmas festival. Yeah. Yeah. So, and exceptionally good, I must say the best, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really good news. So that's hopefully worth a good one for the It's a lovely gentleman with Trevor. Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. He's happy. First, then, any specific questions? Uh, I didn't have a chance to find this on, but I can just quickly go over here. Thank you, Mayor. Good act to see those balances. Yeah. Uh, position at the moment, obviously, we're, we're getting a little bit low in terms of uh, 34,000, but to end of next month, December, uh, we will have a fine reception of the county. That should uh, get back up a bit. Uh, okay. So, we're, as I say, we're financially fairly sound at the moment, but after going into the budget, we have to look at our current financial position mm -hmm. and reserves and take that into account and, and look at the pension mm -hmm. budget. So, and if you're happy to acknowledge those, that's happy to sign that up. So, that, now the biggie 
is <laughs> the budget. Um, um, and clearly, the uh, going to better uh, back to the office, what we do every year. Risk assessments, we take into account some of the factors that are either identified and look to general factors such as inflation. Use the September figure, figure that's used by all government agencies to reprice, and of course that's 10.1%. The other critical one is that we are in a fixed uh, energy deal until September next year, just for six months financial year. And after that, it's very difficult to gauge what the prices will be. So a lot of pressure has had to be put onto looking at how we would have sufficient funds for gas and electricity going forward. But it's very much a crystal ball. We're at 17 pence per kilowatt for electric. I think that would not be rated now. 38 or something like that. Now, whether it, so I've had to really make the best of it, increase the budget accordingly. Um, it really is not the other things uh, you would see that we've taken out. We've had to take out the project fund. Um, asset management, we've got some growth items as well. We desperately need to change the chairs. They served a purpose. They proved that the plastic bucket chairs were totally uncomfortable and other chairs were better, but they're far too heavy for the type of use that we need to go to an aluminium version. So we've, we've costed that in. The lighting engineers <laughs> replaced a lot of lights, which they see in the belt and others that need to be replaced. So we're looking at a program systematic change which is fairly deep. We want to see that we reduce our energy. And in terms of our climate generation, positive there. And that's in the budget. We did not have a product placement for the priority elements of the basic type of the most energy and the most need of being replaced and being used the most. There are those growth elements there. Uh, we try to keep, uh, as I say, uh, the uh, elements such as the gas scheme arrive, the same through the last road and road scheme, and energy efficiency and climate change mitigation. So it's been a, a quite a difficult balance really to, to go through it. In terms of the risk, you have to do an annual risk. You will see that I've identified certain elements in this which. Uh, Need to be addressed. Uh, one is the obviously loss of income. We're still not fully recovered upstairs as we were. The bookings probably are now tend to come back in. Uh, it's very <coughs> difficult again. We're not, not to the full range we were pre pandemic, so that's a slow burn as well in that growth. Online banking. Uh, we used to have a, a, a dongle type arrangement. You can easily bank rely on uh, sending a text to your or a code to your to a mobile, which at the moment is my personal profile. I don't think really that should continue. It's something that's identified by the last human resources committee as well that we should really start business mobiles. So that's something that we need to address going forward. Probably just for myself, the service is quite healthy to continue to use her form. We don't have them. And then the other one, which I think is um, the workload. There's considerable amount of work coming forward. Several conferences where it's been highlighted. A lot of clerks are leaving because it's just getting too much a lot. So we need to be careful with the workload. And then secondly, um, there's um, uh, insurance. Again, that could potentially be a difficult one. We are in a three-year fixed agreement. 
the policies are going through the roof because replacement costs are so expensive. You did increase it though, didn't you? You did increase it, mm -hmm. yeah, to prevent filming. But there is a, war a warning, really, that they, they are hiking insurance cover up because replacement costs, cost materials, are just mm -hmm. not. So, and then on, on this one is a recommendation. Uh, and just our current financial regulations, we can do emergency works up to a thousand pound a week or a week of staff, and then report to the council if it's a risk to building. Uh, and again, given the current nature of repair, we can use a thousand pounds to get much suggested that we increase that and check with other councils. They've been five thousand pounds for a number of years. So that would be allowed that to run. If there had been a major, bigger issue with the roof, yeah, that would have done. In the end, it was only a £250 slate. But if it had caused damage to, to this equipment and everything, mm -hmm. to get that replaced, uh, so it does just an emergency. So is that the incident on the assets only? Yes, it's an estimation. Yeah, it's an estimation. Mm -hmm. There's major critical. It's big repairs. percentage increase, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, the protocol where you can call, say, an emergency meeting, even if it be like online. So now, if something came up and it was over that thousand pound, is that the kind of method you'd look to do in? If you got time, yes. If it's a diary, you can see it's just a diary. Those are there's to raise the limit to five thousand, which is a big increase. I didn't know that. Whether that's a... uh, under our current. We can organise a meeting at 24 hours. 24 hours, just yeah. 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 So maybe. So does it need to be 5,000? For my personal view, like, like the time said, 1,000 pounds doesn't get you an awful lot. Yeah. Some, some firms charge 150 pounds to turn up, you know what I mean? And when they're charging 70 pounds, pound a round. Yeah, I agree with increasing it. It's just, it's a massive increase. It's proportionately a big increase, isn't it? Is there anything that's sitting over you right now? Like you said, we had that small issue with the roof and it transpired to be small later on because of its slate. But is, is there any other issues that we should really like bring forward to the table, which we could expect to, you would have to dip into it's not, that it's book? Not budget, so I'm increasing the amount of increasing the amount of vacant. Authorised yeah. to end the process. And then I have to report it to the council. So it's a dire emergency fund. It's not an increase in budget, it's an increase in what within the budget. But I think the roof was one, and then, you know, going out to tender and then coming to the tender is being received because it was above the thousand pound limit, potentially. So. You know, it would be nice to be able to. So that means after five thousand pounds, wouldn't have to be tendered now. Is that what that means as well? It would be tendered if it's not urgent. Is it purely for right. the, uh, the urgent, which means we're going to maintain our existence? Yeah, like it's if usually an urgent. It's like a can often be a temporary repair or something, particularly on insurance, can't it? Well, it, it's just to make sure that we don't. You know, we've had issues with roof where you know. By the time you get the contractors in, it's, it's worse. So it's about, you know, quick fix plaster to make sure we get the work done. Is it, is, well, the way forward, uh, it, it, this is the moment. We've been following meeting in 24 hours notice. We can have that meeting suspended um, as long as it's necessary in order to find out the repairs. But um, you, you would have to just be by that. Yeah, yeah, intriguing anyway. Yeah, yeah, so it has to be reported and it's not what it's just, it's just an extra thing. It's not what we're going to spend a lot of money. It's something we might have to get in the dire emergency situation. If that had been a more consequence of break in and damage, you soon would have ended up with thousand. Then you'd have to defend them. So, with the proviso that you know you have got the new apparel as well, and mm. for 24 hours, build that.
So having taken all those factors into account, would you feel more comfortable if it was set at a lower bar or? No, I'm happier with that discussion now. I've got a couple of other questions, but I'll wait mm -hmm. until Gareth's finished. Yeah. So as you can see, what, what we've done with um, the paper uh, is repriced the inflation uh, as an uplift, and then sometimes we take the uplift, and sometimes we don't. Uh, and then uh, I've tried to have the take below the anywhere that was a farm. So there's a thousand pound request for the HR matters in the last year. That gives you to maintain that. That was a case of to get external. Based on anything. There's an amalgamation of all travel agency services. So the LTC site is on the site that we're dealing with at the top of the end. Premiums have increased in response to it. Uh, cost, so that's the cost inflation. Insurance expected an increase. Um, increase due to take up of the notion they mentioned by members. There are changes in that. It may not be taxable. Waiting for a decision on that, which would be interesting. So as I say, I won't go into them all, but um, the critical ones are the energy costs. Obviously, we've had to try and estimate some mm -hmm. twelve thousand and gas sixteen thousand going forward. And they may be way over, but uh, we won't know. Much. to be much safer. There's a little remark there about uh, uh, members of the house that are coming out of a taxable thing. That would also be the need for payroll. Yeah. 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 I need to send you an email. <coughs> Is that referring to the payments that members can get for technology? And yeah. yeah. There's a statutory uh, um, uh, £150 per member. Yeah. It's taxable at the moment. It's taxable at the moment. Just so that the payroll's paid on. Yeah. Just so that the payroll's paid on. 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 Just so um, yeah, so as I say, it, it, it's a mix of precaution on the energy side, taking out project money to cover that repairs, but then not diminishing our repairs and renewal. There's still quite a lot to be done. Uh, Chambridge Square, as you see, that's the asset management of new ground. There's still quite a lot to be done in certain areas. Can I just ask that, how often is that project fund, uh, how often that, is that dispersed? Do people, are people poor coming with projects or? Well, that's our projects. That's a fund for term. specific projects that we wanted our money to spend on projects. Right, OK. So it, for, for a number of years, it's been <laughs> to match what work done on the town. That's OK. Or started with Centene Square, we got the reason for that project mm -hmm. to get money for the square. We sent the drop, which we did. So, uh, yeah. so it does mean that we don't really have any much funding yeah. going forward for anything, which is disappointing. Um, and then at the very end, you can see this calculation that it is that actually would have come in at a 14 pound increase on Bandy properties, which is quite a lot. So, mm -hmm. what I'm suggesting is that we've got the reserves. And I'm anticipating again we've got to do programs in the money for that and box windings to come out of reserve. We probably need gonna need some reserve for the chain bridge. But I'll come back to us. But that's anticipated where we'll be in the end uh, of months of the year. So again. Have we any clue at all what the change might be costing? No. But uh, I budgeted about another six. And then what I'm suggesting is that if we sort of repackage our requirement for next year and cover the costs, maybe the uh, increase in the precept, the 1475, which you'll see is 
Good on it. There. So if we take that out of the we can still still move in a substantial mm -hmm. increase. But it's not going to be 14, 15 pounds, it's more like six foot yeah. six pounds thirty. Um where does that look in, in relation to inflation? So obviously I've seen, apart from the energy, because we know that's an outlier, but a lot of the other things you've used, that 10% 10, 10 inflation, where does that increase in the precept lie in terms of inflation against what households can expect to see? 5-6%. Yeah. Is it? That's what it's in. Right. And £14, £15 would be over your 10% inflation. I just pick your brain is that the council, uh, post council mentioned in the nothing, nothing else of the um, for what we got over the 18 and 93 increase of about six pounds in the last six years. So it's not 10 percent, it's not the 8.40, mm -hmm. so it's a reduction in terms of we, we haven't looked at full inflation or less than full inflation. And what we're saying is we're covering the cost of inflation <coughs> by reducing it to six to six twenty seven. Bearing in mind we've had to guesstimate energy yeah. because that's way above inflation. That's yeah. The energy prices are what driving the whole inflation mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. and they're going up at a rate some people probably it's about a thousand pounds they don't want to speak about tonight. Which they have to go to yeah. So, we've got, so yeah. it's, it's not just that because I know you put that as an example, and a lot of people are doing likewise, but uh, also the energy prices haven't gone up by 50 times. They've gone up by No, but it's the, um, it's the uh, standing charge. Yeah. The standing charge is going through the roof. And that's supposed to be to supply the energy to you in your locality. That's the same energy you can supply to the same locality, but they've got standing charges going up almost to them. The knock on effect is considerable. And as, as Councillor Edwards has said, uh, we had, well, I was at all Wales conference last week, as we see one of those finance Welsh government to prepare. There's a four billion pound hole that Welsh government finances for the next few years. Their priority is going to be education, health, and social services. So you can see what's going to happen. Local government is mentioned. So there's it's got an tremendous pressure, and they are looking to town treaty councils to pick up cost of living issues, support green infrastructure, trying to generate energy locally, those kind of aspects. So, you okay? Yeah, I mean, for instance, you know, additional strategic pressures and the right to five million being identified since the summer. Um, Relating mainly to pay increases and personal things that you have. So, Lena, we did say at the last meeting that a report was going to come to this meeting about the warm spaces. Mm -hmm. um, It'll be December. It's just there's so much on the agenda. We're still researching it. Okay, we'll have a lot of feedback from other people. So, how, sorry, one last tiny question. How does that look in in relation to years gone by and the amount we've put up the preset? Well, you can see is that going to come as a shock? It's like 82 to uh, okay, 81. Okay, so that's how much it's got. Sorry, yeah, I missed that. So it is going to come as a bit of a. I mean, that 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 blow. is less of a shock. Yeah, than that. Than that 1497 for sure. And in proportion, it's less of a shock than when we. Acquire the town hall and put a precept charge on. Right. I think you just see it. We're in a bit of a dire situation with everything, really. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, it's much more feasible that we uh, and I try and eat up a bit, a bit of the cost ourselves. The second, of, of the second very point. And I think if you're forward thinking, like you said, with the LED lights being done before that energy change comes into place, then you're doing the most you can, like with the, the installation and, and, you know, putting things in place quickly, using the funds that we've got to make sure that when those energy prices do change, it's not such a bite. And, and it may be that we hold up the energy costs, mm. which could come back in, and then we could reduce next year, we'll see it. 
in the language at all. You know, the yeah. lines that you're talking about is the theatre lighting, that's general lighting. Right, okay. So, uh, high energy, very short, use of the air. Right, okay. I mean, all these stuff are LED. We've got all the sort of public areas and all that. That's stuff that you need to do things on the installation. You need to ask the users to close the doors, not the usual. But, you know, it's going to be a tricky time. It leaks like a service. The mates last week, I mean, she tried to change. How many people are going to have to go to the building? Or have to go to the so I was like, oh, well. Yeah. Can, we, can we access into that transforming towns? Is there transforming towns? I've received some communication about that. Um, yeah. Well, as I said, that's the property going forward as a Some of them have been answered. Um, a small, a small one, and then two slightly more important ones. Um, in terms of the risk assessment, which I had a good look through, there's a risk rate of just high in terms of staff holding funds at home, as well as I can read yeah. that right. But then the mitigation is that staff don't funds hold funds at home. So I wasn't quite sure well, if, if they don't know. hold funds at home, why it's rate well, just high risk. The risk is that if we were to take funds, it could be high risk. But you're not allowed to because it says in the mitigation. So the mitigation is a so it reduces the high risk. Could potentially. Okay, can see the bit. Why was it on there? Mm -hmm. If it's just not allowed to happen. Yeah. But two two other ones. Um, you mentioned in your notes at the end there about HR matters, and at three point five in yeah. the report, you said you and you're anticipating unexpected staff costs, which is interesting. But and it's a high risk. And then you talk about mitigations in terms of reviewing the staff structure and things. So I just wondered what. What are the risks there going forward that, you, that you're identifying? Well, it's just been an, an increase, substantially. First of January, first of April is the date that we should get the annual pay settlement. This was approved last week. Yeah, but in the so document, it wasn't week. just pay rises. It was like you were talking about long-term sickness and... Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's right. And that's why there's a reserve now. I thought, is that the only mitigation? Does the staffing yeah. structure actually need a review, or do we could put some other mitigations in rather than changing well, the staffing? Let's make sure that you know, we're doing everything we can within the resources mm -hmm. we've got. But we have kind of been quite an out in uh, asset. If, if I was still sick, so you can't do the staff by you, and then yeah. is it a caretaker? Is that the job Facilities. description? Facilities. If if I was going to say it long term, to long term, sorry. oh sorry, specifically long term, under the um, so this is for HR under the business council in Japan, you would go and get a local from SLC right, yeah. and a local charity a lot more. Right. Than you pay me. So that's why there's a risk of that. So that's something you want yeah. the HR committee yeah. to do. Yeah. And these things would normally have been discussed in great detail by all the, the, the um, by HR, by Tito by asset management. But I don't think we, we have Yeah, because because this risk detail. assessment I've not this seen. This is a rolling from this is a rolling program, yeah. and therefore we haven't really been involved in fact uh, we haven't specifically met uh, in terms of a bit of project work in the recovery. No, but um, it, it's difficult because the overriding cost. If you're talking about the whole council budget work in Glasgow, yeah, because of COVID, and then that really is a council meeting, so it's difficult. Yeah, so you know, it's many times a month, standing on the floor. You know, yeah. has it been discussed by HR? HR did discuss it. Well, we've, we've got, we've got I'm it. On it. I'm sorry, it's on, it's on, it's, on, it's in the business, it's part of the business continuity plan that we would employ. So it's about sickness cover, how you factor all that in. So one of the mitigations is for example, you don't have to reserve. You would use that to pay any extra benefits of staffing. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah just because I'm not on the HR committee, I wasn't aware of the staffing structure and the actual job titles that people were recruited yeah. to. Um, and then the other one was in terms of uh, it links to insurance, but in yeah. terms of broken seats, is that is that your job or is that the caretaker's job? In terms of inspecting seats, because I know that there was a show relatively recently where the show crew repaired a seat. Yeah, well, they do that for So they repair, um, repair seats for them. Because even if we get them, you know. Oh, so does that not, because they picked that up, whereas actually I thought it sounded like it was someone's role to inspect them regularly. Well, the seats are, are impractical. They, they came from the written school. Well, I'm guessing if they haven't spotted it, is my point. Yeah, where, if they haven't checked, which isn't they're not paid to do, then somebody could have sat on a broken seat. That that's related to the insurance. That's the management that um, although it was a good idea at the time, the practicality is that the chairs aren't up to the job. Yeah. And you need to replace the whole lot. Right. So that's the decision. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when they're out of town, what we do is we take them out of mission. Of course, the the users book the seats out, so that's why they repair them because they've got numbers of people. Uh, they haven't yeah. got because we haven't got any replacement seats. Right. So that's why they tend to repair, and then the repair is on the repair. They don't repair. So we find where it needs to be replaced. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. that they're much more comfortable than the old bucket plastic yeah. seats. Well, but uh, when they came from school. Schools that are um, on a assembly <laughs> situation because they weren't moving around. Yeah. They're not being stacked and restacked. Yeah. And what about <laughs> users don't treat them with that school mm -hmm. respect and they'll put the wrong seat with the wrong size. You know, they want to go square back, they go round back, they make them fit together and it's bad. And they get bent and damaged. So, yeah, but they're those factors. And that's something we picked up from you know, the to the budget from asset management because this is a growth area we can sort that. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions? Yes, we go to the actual material copy with the actual resident. Um, so we, we obviously got to maintain how much for the town council's assets, the party for 2024. One of the key things there is the energy costs, obviously. The resource risk assessment influence the actions identified, so those red ones with the reservation, but we also got the emergency power commit with committees down. Three supposed to have the tech reserves, so that's the revised reserves for the public. And then you agree that budget for 24 24. Beautiful. That's 627, isn't that right? For the band -aid. Yes, yeah, not yeah. the 14. Yeah, not the 14. Yeah. Proposer. Just a proposal. Well, I cannot get information out as to what the band D level is. So it's not like 1707. Because obviously they're not telling me. I don't know what effect. Uh, oh, the new band D is going to be anyway because, from uh, Central. Because they're above band D. Mm. So band D is used, but it may not be that. Houses that try and get the should assist. I'd have to go on 70 or 70. So not bandy yet, but I don't think it's great. I'm not bandy yet. 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 I'm not Floral displays, a lot of other equipment funded to do our own Christmas decorations. And, and I think where we were talking about in the asset management just quickly the other day um, about you utilising our asset, the town hall mainly, and ensuring that it's available at a good rate for our LL20 essentially, then, you know, moving forward, you know, that, that we can push that locally like come and use this local facility that we're taking care of using your preset money um and it's available at a good rate for you to hire utilize for your events and things like that so just you know give it some positive yeah 
No, no, I mean weddings. Yeah, I get to go up to the first wedding. Which is promising. <laughs> Mark recommends we accept the risk assessment and set the band D annual charge of six pounds. Have we got an increase of any? Increase of any. I think we've lost council. Darren, has he lost some change? I heard him recently. I've got a second. Thank you very much. Is there still? Yeah, oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, no, he's he's dropped out, hasn't he? It's a request to job. Yeah, no, she's out. Uh... Anyway, it's still poor, right? Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so okay. that's been proposed and seconded. Councillor Hardy in second. Councillor Marshall. Councillor reports. Um, yeah, um, first is um, <laughs> first is uh, the city signing up the civility reflects pledge to commit to stand It's an initiative that's been featured before the yeah. by the National Association of the Council, Congress, Wales, SLCC, and uh, they set up a project board. Working group to oversee this project, um, and it's recognised that uh, this, this should be done at the heart of public life. It's essential for good governance. It's relatively straightforward and safe to do. Would you be happy to endorse the process tonight based on the statements of 3.5? Years ago, and then it is uh, registered on the SLCC website. This is different to something that's come through today, which, the, which is the Welsh Government policy for the conduct, which is another thing that forward as well. So, this is a series of these things. So, yes, we can go back to the statement. Well, I, I, I'm a little bit concerned about this because we're already covered by the code of conduct. We're generally covered by the code of conduct, but a bit like uh, we're, we're bombarded with stuff that regulates our behaviour, both in public and in private. So what do we need to duplicate what we already have with another layer of protocol? That would be my observation. Is this a legal requirement? No, not legal requirement, but it, you know, it's just saying that the council that has stability and respect at the heart of what you do, what you do. And so furthermore, to what Councillor Hadley said then, does it put any more onus on you workload-wise when you've already identified that your workload's getting heavier, or is it just something that we... It's a simple pledge that, you know, that you personally don't see there's anything in 3-4 that if you were want to be a good council, you would not wish to support, mm. which we are currently already doing. Mm, yeah, and it, it overlaps, doesn't it? Yeah, goes good mm -hmm. with that saying that. Yeah. Well, it's just yourself, you know, a, a which then is registered and people see that you have signed up to this pledge to treat people with care of the Is this so that other councillors and employees of the council, or is this sort of in your private life as well? There is a problem once you're a councillor, you really have got a break. If you do make untoward comments, even as a councillor, you can't bring the councillor into disrepute. So there are exceptions, but it reminds me I've still got to check whether the trade the code of conduct training is coming from the county. If not, we'll have to move fast. They, they did have that training on that day. Yeah, that yeah. Day. Yeah. I don't have any objections to this pledge, as as you've said, it's it's what we've sort of already signed up to, isn't it? We just need um, the wording correct on the recommendation, don't we? That 
it is recommended to the, the statement and signs up to the pledge. We just need to. Oh, yeah, you recommend to accept the statement yeah. as people signed up to the pledge for the registering mm -hmm. Do you wish to take this to a vote or? Is it been proposed? Oh, it's it's been proposed by none. No. 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 I'm not proposing it. <laughs> okay. No, nobody wishes to take this board. That's fine. Is that pulls. No. To be a council purely No, that's not that, that statement is incorrect. But we're not a council that is not intending to pe treat people with respect. We're a council that adheres to our standing orders and, our, and we operate under the principles on which we were elected and serve. Okay. Um, Citizens Law Committee. Yes, uh, we had a long debate in the committee. Uh, uh, recommendations to expand the remit, um, and this is very much the basis of the report that went to just as well. Again, not to look through too much, so it's self explanatory. Just so when it first started, you know, and the internet and things like that, things have moved on, climate change is quite a critical element of theological matters, we declare the climate logical emergency it's with other significant uh, bodies um, and therefore uh, it's found that the remit would be better if we mm -hmm. allow the, the committee to cover um, those elements so that uh, the terms of reference will be amended as per the, the, the appendix and that the council has to authorise that and rename it climate, ecology, and to slow. I agree to that. This is put forward <clears throat> by the committee to the council to recommend. Yeah, council. we had a long discussion. That's fine, because it, it, came, it came before us before, but it, it was generated outside of the committee. If they've agreed and put it forward. Yeah, I have to confess, I'm mildly daunted by <clears throat> sort of the climate emergency <laughs> out. But, uh, <laughs> the <Not> no shoulders. <laughs> the list of things that we are in so sad, but um, I think it's right we have a focus on that. So. Okay. Do we have a proposal to accept this? Am I allowed to propose it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I propose it as chair of the. Yeah. And a seconder? Yep. Yeah. That's it. First. Yeah. Are we against this? <laughs> 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 okay. Um, Final reports is uh, Town Council training plan. It's now under the Both Government of Wales Election Act statutory duty to have a training plan. Six months of duty. So what should be on the 5th of November is the actual date uh, they are accepting uh, committees, councils, meetings of power with that, but as long as they're in November to allow uh, to apply with that requirement. Uh, we did have a training policy, and um, in essence, the policy has been amended to reflect the new legislation. Some work is done by one of those Wales on a model training plan, and it's a very important thing to it. And as you can see, the uh, nation is that you adopt the revised training development policy, and the training plan has contained it. So that's our interim training plan. Resources to monitor that each year. Once members have completed their various personal assessments, uh, we would then, then start putting uh, people onto one voice rights courses to cover that or identify in a strain or other. So, um, Can I just clarify? Uh, the report is called Council Training Plan mm -hmm. and then the council, the training plan is attached. I don't see a policy anywhere. So I don't have any objections to the training plan that's been attached. But are we being asked to look at a policy as well? Because it's not. No, the, the it says that recommended that the town council adopts the, the revised training and development policy. 
and yeah. training plan, but I can't see the policy. The training plan. <laughs> Okay, so so, so it's so effectively now, both. Now become the the. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's now rather than. It's combined. Yeah, rather than okay. have two doc, separate documents, okay. then it forms an uh, final annex as the actual action plan training. Okay, uh, and can you just give us? A, are there any headlines that have changed drastically since the last one? No, only the fact that it's a statutory requirement. So right. in the in the in the um, preamble, we've got because um, it says it's revised, but I didn't, I don't, I wasn't, I haven't had no. a chance to go and look at what the previous one was saying. So this, instead of saying we would buy policy, it's now a statutory duty to have the training plan, oh. and therefore the policy has been amended to reflect that. Um, it outlines what we expect to be doing, and then at the very end. So just it just need to say in the title of it that it's it's the training policy and plan and within the same yeah, document. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Some of us have already done some training and others haven't. Mm. How does that now affect? Well, be a re we will record that um, centrally. Okay. We'll have to have a training board. Uh, board it. You all had induction. You had them. We did extra training on procedures. Councillor. Uh, Actually, I think the other one that managed to go into that <laughs> course. Um, they promised another one, but if not, we will have to uh, sign up the up to one by Wales train. That's because I didn't pick up your email saying it wasn't on, so I just looked on as yeah. per their email and it was on. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they sent it out to council, and I think that was the original council. I didn't see that. Meeting. They re forwarded an email with council on the top. So I thought, oh, they've cancelled it. <laughs> and they had not because no, that will now incur a cost to the council, won't it? Well, they are saying that it's another one on. So ah. you know, a lot of people got confused with the whole process. So, uh, We've got a proposer to superpose that. There's a couple of questions I'd like to ask on this. The only thing that bothers me with this is, um, you know, as councillors, as members, as elected members, we're being appraised. Um, and who's going to be doing the appraising? That's an appraisal, it's a self appraisal. Yeah, it is. And then the um, requires us to do an annual completion of a template. If one of us resigns, or for whatever reason, and we've been on the train of course within two years, and who recovers the cost of that train? All of a sudden, we're no longer elected members responsible to the electorate. Well, it's a statutory duty. You have to have a train plan, you have to be trained. It's not my doing, it's local yeah, government. Yeah. Act. Does, does, it, does it include recovery costs in that statutory requirement? Well, it's up to the council to decide. Well, that's what I'm saying. They could decide okay. not to recover the costs. But it, it covers both staff and normally members. Of staff. About members. Well, normally, if you're sent on training, in terms of in terms of the staffing that would come under HR discussion that would be a that would be a <laughs> I've not understood your question there, sorry. Well I'm, under this setup. Yeah. If if they send us on a, on a course for um, Code of conduct, for example, and it costs 25 quid. And, and you, you resigned on a point of principle that then the council could recover the 25 quid. From you as an individual. Right. So you are interested, will be in receipt of £115 plus extra yeah. 15 yeah, yeah. for being councillors as well. Yeah, but that's a statutory yeah. thing. So even if you did the training the course. Training, yes, but yeah, but not the recovery. <laughs> so even if you did the training course whilst you were an active. Serving member, if you then leave, they can reclaim. Okay, I didn't spot that. It's um, within five, five to two years. We'll do this. So, what if you had to leave for illness or something? Or you died. 
Pardon? Yeah, yeah, well, that might be closer for some of us than yeah. It keeps on cutting out here. Mm. <laughs> well, if you died, you won't have to worry about it. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's being derived of your training. Yeah, but, yeah. To, if we adopt this, it's not. Yeah, well, it's, it's normal practice to, 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 to try and defend you doing normal training and then walk out the country. Yeah. Yeah. But how much training are we actually going to be? Two days, very different. Within six months, it's a different amount. But it's, it's, it's to try and persuade people. If, if a lot of people say, well, I'm going to do all this training and I'm going to walk out. I think it's quite a little past time policy now in most of our conditions to do that. Yeah, if you're an employee, you can't do it. If I agree, you're not with volunteers. Yeah. And we're responsible to your development as well. We're not. We're letting the evidence on monitoring position by cleaning on volunteers who are like volunteers. Yeah, we're volunteering ourselves to that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so, would that be a second proposal then to remove that part? Well, I find it, I, I would think it would be iniquitous, but there we are. You, you, you may not agree with my viewpoint. Okay. Can you point me to the place where it says it's point two on page three? You go down through the, uh, I think it's on page. Uh, not in an annex, no. Yeah, it's on page it's like two, paragraph five point two. The name. It's on page thirty-two, thirty-three. Okay, so it has a sliding scale. So could you find yourself in a position where a member chooses? <laughs> Yeah. Could you find yourself in a position where a member chooses to go on, say, 10 training courses and then the next month stands down? <laughs> because you're saying we're expected to do two per year. But if you put yourself forward, two days, more than that. Two days yeah, if you put yourself forward and then the, the council funded those and then so that they might amount instead of £25 or £100, they might amount to thousands of pounds being invested in you as an elected member and then subsequently you standing down. Quite often if you take councillors out that seat and then you just stand down. So we've got proposals to remove councillors and to prove to staff or we've got proposals to leave us as it is. So if anybody wishes to vote the first one which is to leave us as it is. No, one of mine would be an amendment, wouldn't it? No, I'm sorry. Yeah, take that first. So right. the amendment would be to take to, the, to remove the word councillors. I'm sorry, what was the second option? Well, to leave it as it is. But you would take the amendment, take the amendment first, mm -hmm. but you would like to speak the word. Okay. So somebody mm -hmm. might like to second that. And, uh, and, because nobody else has. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's great. Turn forward. Keep running. I've got any applications. I haven't done the thoroughness of uh, the. Okay, so I'm just going to. Didn't notice anything. The only one which we have in the past objected to is changing the shop to coffee shop. Have made representations in the past that are numbered coffee shops. Which premises is this to? 42 um, Market, Street. Market Street. So we have, we only have, and the last one was um, Andy Boss when they wanted to convert that into a cafe, and even though there have been a cafe there, we were successful in our comments. I have raised to the County Council, so actually, or maybe it's a conversation to have with Cameron, actually. I'll have it with you separately. Has anyone got any further comments on Riverman Abbey Road, a demolition of existing extension, erection of single and two story extension? Oh, they're at the very, very top, aren't they? Are we going to the gender? No. Oh. 42 miles, is it? Here we go. Um, so I think that's in line with obviously what you were just discussing there with how many and 
Am I right in saying Denbyshire County Council have already held a position on that in Tlangothlam, where there's so many coffee shops already mm -hmm. in the town that converting the use of other buildings from shops into more coffee shops is would seem to be uh, counterintuitive, let's say. We have made the transformation to compartment events, which is exactly why we did that for the change. Can you remind me where 42 Market Street is? So it's currently the building which used to be um, an old derelict garage, which being converted. Um, <laughs> so by Mr. Wilson, it's being converted, it, which is so now an antique shop. shop. It's still an antique shop, okay. and they're proposing that that become a mixed. Mr. Wilson, by Kendrick. There's two or three along there already. Um, yeah, so you've still And so it houses. Okay, uh, should we put forward that we allow the county council to make their own decision on that? So therefore, we've got the policy and plan. Would that be right, thinking that the county council have got? A form of policy on the amount of coffee shops. If I just pluck that out of thin air, but they don't. They don't have sort of statement of licensing policies because I've inquired about that before in terms of an overarching statement about <coughs> the profile of a town and what it should look like in in terms of pubs, in terms of cafes, in terms of fast food outlets, and without, as I understand it, an overarching statement about that then they have to look at each planning on an individual basis. And if the planning meets regulations, they can't turn it down because they risk litigation if right. they turn down a legitimate request. And I've asked them before about, please, would you look at a statement, a policy statement? Because then if they have that, they have recourse to saying, well, it doesn't fit with that policy, which I suppose is what I was going to raise to you in terms of when you look at an area, some areas have done things like you don't have fast food outlets within a 10 minute walk of a school, for example, mm. lots of, you know, problems with obesity, things like that. They're just not looking at it in, that, in my opinion, in that strategic way to say, do we need more cafes? Do we need more burger bars? Do we need more licensed premises? Do we need more outlets? Um, mm. that, it's, it frustrates me. That's a separate matter though, isn't it? Because it needs to be. It is, but I suppose if we're saying we'll leave it to the council, I suppose that's a concern we'd, I'd, I'd like to be back. Would we be more comfortable then in putting a proposal forward or a comment forward that um, we don't support the change of shop, <coughs> shop to council? I thought it was. You yeah. do, do you say? Well, too many of them. Too many of them, yeah. The only problem is I'm not entirely sure. Do you object? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. We can, we can make the observation. Yeah, make the yeah. observation. Made the observation in the past, and it was used mm -hmm. to support the town. It, 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 if the town, if the town council makes an observation, they're unhappy with the, mm. the loss of shops in yeah. the town centre. That supports the county council on the one-to-one -one basis. Yeah, you're joking. To say, <laughs> yeah. to say, well, it's another loss. Of, yeah. yeah, there's a loss of shops yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm also concerned with their lack of strategy regarding planning for the town. I mean, there's, there's, when we last debated this, for example, when the, the, the same as Beasley is coming, mm -hmm. we got through all this uh, retail impact assessment to say what the effect it's going to have. There is no shop or cafe impact assessment. Mm -hmm. When you see a point when it's just, just mm -hmm. total, they're all competing against each other, mm -hmm. and it, it, it weakens the, the value because they can't compete. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I seem to recall that when it was saying, Originally, the original application, they wanted to put their cafe. Yeah, that gives them, you know, for that. So the retail have to have yeah. an impact so that they're manufacturing to have on the other shops in the town, but there's no such thing. Mm -hmm. That's the it's got cafes. So we, because we made the point last time, the system to county yeah. to defer it, that's a good change. It's like you said, because you know, I don't want to waste our time. The entire profile of the challenge has changed. That's 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, is everybody happy to put forward a comment on the council? Yeah. Okay. And the other two, we need to pass out the vote in the 
Okay, certificates in of decision, just the one there, I think. Yeah. So it can also go on, so that's been approved. Um, point 12, correspondence. Uh, yes, I have got my contribution to have the cost of the year in 2023. Traditionally, we sang the bar on the stand of the family, and that's where that resources go. Issue well. So that's why we need to have hobbies. And there is one other email <clears> from <throat> today, Mr. Yellow. There will be an agenda item on that type of hobbies. We still have and uh, but, uh, the farm would like to know if we need to sit on the dimension of this group. So I put this through as correspondence. We will be grateful for the names of the group. Would that be worth putting in an email and forwarding that to everybody? A few members not here this evening. No, obviously. Well, exactly. As I said, we have the Look on the um, outside body membership for this and the because it's in two other counties that we still have quite a bit of examining. Yes. Everyone's happy with that? Yeah. To defer there are loads of members because somebody have wing mince pies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. That's fine. <laughs> Pardon? Nobody mentioned me. <laughs> we have any further comments? I can bring mince pies every time if that gets everybody up. That's heated to debate. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I was just thinking that. That's a bit good. The start, start baking and the spread on. <laughs> okay, we'll close the meeting at 7.46. Thank you all for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you.